Some cars are built to get you from point A to point B. And then there are cars where engineers asked, can we do this? Without ever asking, should we do this? Today, I'm showing you the most over-engineered cars ever made. These are machines that defied logic, destroyed budgets, but ended up becoming legends. Let's dive in. We're starting our list in the 1960s with the Mercedes-Benz 600 Grocer, or the Grand Mercedes, as it's officially known. This was the most absurdly luxurious car of its era. This car is so over-engineered that almost everything inside runs on a hydraulic system. Windows, doors, trunk, seats, even the sunshades. Mercedes engineers decided that instead of simple electric motors, they'd install a hydraulic system running at 150 bar of pressure. Why? Because they could. The 6.3 liter V8 wasn't just powerful, it had to be, because it was also running a hydraulic pump. This was the car of dictators, kings, and rock stars. And when it broke down, well, you'd better have a Mercedes specialist in a very thick wallet. Pure German over-engineering from the Cold War era. Fast forward to 1989. Toyota wanted to destroy the German luxury car dominance, so they didn't just build a luxury car. They built an engineering masterpiece that made Mercedes and BMW nervous. The LS400's one Yuse F EV8 engine is legendary. Toyota tested this engine by running it at full throttle for days. They balanced it so perfectly that you could stand a champagne glass on the engine while it was running and not spill a drop. That's not marketing hype, that's actual testing they did. But here's the crazy part. Toyota spent over $1 billion developing this car. They built a dedicated test track in Germany to simulate the Autobahn. They studied luxury competitors so obsessively that they allegedly rented hotel rooms overlooking Mercedes parking lots just to see how their cars were built. The result? A car so reliable and refined that it redefined what a luxury car should be. The Germans had to go back to the drawing board. Speaking of Germans going back to the drawing board, in 1991, Mercedes responded with the W140 S-Class, and they went absolutely berserk with engineering. Double-pane windows for sound insulation, self-closing doors with pneumatic assists, a hydraulic suspension system that could adjust each wheel independently. The door handles were electrically heated so your fingers wouldn't touch cold metal in winter. Even the first aid kit was illuminated. Mercedes spent so much money on this car that it nearly bankrupted them. It was over-engineered to a fault, literally. The complexity meant things could and did break, but when it worked, it was like riding on a cloud at 150 miles per hour. This was Mercedes saying, we're still the kings after the LS400 shot. Excess defined. Now let's talk about corporate pride gone wild. In the early 2000s, Ferdinand Pieck, Volkswagen's chairman, wanted to prove VW could build a car better than Mercedes. Not just as good, better. The Phaeton had to meet insane requirements. It had to be able to cruise all day at 186 miles per hour in 122 degree Fahrenheit heat while maintaining 72 degree Fahrenheit inside. The panel gaps had to be perfect. The W12 engine version had 12 cylinders and could whisper you to 200 miles per hour. VW built a glass factory in Dresden to assemble these by hand. They used technology that filtered the car multiple times. They over-engineered every single detail. The problem? Nobody wanted to pay $100,000 for a Volkswagen. It was a commercial disaster but an engineering triumph. Piek proved his point and lost millions doing it. The early 90s were wild for Japanese sports cars, and the 3000 GT VR4 might be the wildest of them all. Twin turbos, check all-wheel drive, check four-wheel steering, active aero, adjustable suspension, check, check, and check. Mitsubishi threw every piece of technology they had at this car. It had more computers than some spaceships, pop-up headlights, dual intercoolers, and so many systems that the car weighed as much as a small truck. It was technological overkill in the best possible way. Sure, it was complex and heavy, but on paper, this thing was from the future. The VR4 was Mitsubishi's engineers showing off everything they could do, reliability and simplicity be damned. And speaking of 90s Japanese legends, the A80 Supra. But here's the thing. Toyota over-engineered this car in the smartest way possible. The 2 JZ GTE engine is basically indestructible. Toyota built it with such a massive safety margin that stock internals can handle double or triple the factory horsepower. We're talking about an engine that makes 320 horsepower from the factory, but can easily handle 800 to 1,000 horsepower with just bolt-ons. The sequential twin-turbo system was revolutionary. The inline six was balanced so perfectly it could rev to the moon. The transmission, the differential, the chassis, everything was built to handle way more than Toyota was giving it. They over-engineered it for a future they didn't even add Advertise. And that's why, 30 years later, the Supra is still a tuner legend. Toyota accidentally built a monster. Now let's talk about modern over-engineering. The 991 and 992 generation 911 Targa is what happens when Porsche engineers refuse to compromise. Porsche could have just made a simple removable roof panel. Instead, they created an automated origami show. Press a button and watch. The rear glass lifts up like a clamshell. The roof panel folds and stores itself behind the seats, then the glass closes back down, all in about 20 seconds. This system adds weight, complexity, and cost. But it's pure Porsche perfectionism. They over-engineered a convertible roof just to keep the classic Targa look while making it fully automatic. It's completely unnecessary and absolutely brilliant. That's why we love Porsche. When Mercedes and McLaren decided to build a supercar together in the mid-2000s, Subtle was not on the agenda. The SLR had a supercharged 5.5-liter VI8 making 617 horsepower, but that's not the over-engineered part. The body was made from carbon fiber. The doors opened upward. The exhaust exited from the sides with flames. The brakes were carbon ceramic, some of the first on a production car. But here's the crazy part. Mercedes insisted it still be a luxury car, so it had automatic transmission, comfortable seats, and even a trunk. McLaren wanted a race car. Mercedes wanted a grand tour, and the result was this beautifully confused over-engineered monster. It cost $500,000, and every penny went into making it excessive. No regrets.
If we're talking about over-engineering, we have to talk about the Lexus LFA. This car is what happens when Toyota's board tells their engineers, build the ultimate supercar, and then forgets to check the budget. Toyota spent 10 years and nearly a billion dollars developing this car. They scrapped the entire aluminum chassis midway through and started over with carbon fiber. The 4.8 liter V10 revs to 9,000 RPM and sounds like Formula One angels singing. It revs so fast they had to use a digital tachometer because analog needles couldn't keep up. Only 500 were made. Each one cost more to build than Toyota sold it for. This car was never about making money. It was about pride, perfection, and proving Lexus could build something truly special. The LFA a is the definition of over-engineered art. And now, the car that redefined automotive insanity, the Bugatti Veyron. 1,000 horsepower from a quad-turbo W16 engine. 10 radiators. Not one, not three, ten. Four turbochargers. A seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, all-wheel drive, an active rear wing that also acts as an air brake. Top speed of 253 miles per hour. To reach top speed, the Veyron drops itself closer to the ground, adjusts the wing angle, and locks the whole chassis into maximum attack mode. At full speed, it drains the fuel tank in 12 minutes and the tires last 15 minutes. The level of engineering needed just to make this car stable at over 250 miles per hour is mind-blowing. Volkswagen lost millions on every Veyron. On sold. But they didn't care. This was Ferdinand Pieck's final middle finger to physics, common sense, and anyone who said it couldn't be done. The Veyron is automotive excess perfected. So there you have it. 10 cars where engineers completely lost control and we're all better for it. These machines prove that sometimes the best cars come from asking what if and never asking why. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. See you in the next one.